So, you will introduce yourself. Well, I'm Nina. Yes, I'm Stina. We rhyme. We know. <laughs> <laughs> so, we're going to talk about building flood resilience together. And this is uh, a project uh, where we try to explore new ways of addressing the issue of urban flooding. Um, okay. <laughs> So some hard problems don't always have hard solutions. It's often more efficient to use what you might call soft techniques. So as you were pointing out, we can't rebuild, rebuild the entire city to fit today's weather conditions or the ones of tomorrow. But by involving everyone working and living in the city, we may achieve change. So communication and collaboration are essential in doing this. And building flood resilience together is part of VRSYD, and that's a water and wastewater uh, association in southwest of Sweden. And the project started in 2017 and works within Malmö. And next year we will also expand and include Lund in our work. Um, and we work obviously very close to our colleagues at VRSYD and very close to the city of Malmö. Yes, so why are we working with this project? Uh, well, <laughs> your question. Because <Thank> you. <laughs> in Malmö, this is the land ownership in Malmö and in uh, Lund as well, 30% uh, of the land is owned by the municipality. There's where we can um, do stuff. That's our responsibility. 70% is private property land. And in Sweden, we have no legal way of making people take care of the water. We can't force them to detain water or purify water or whatever. There is no legal way. So we have to make people want to take care of the water, to make them understand why it's important and to be a part of the solution. And that's the main goal for this project. Uh, it's to affect the 70%, because we are working our ass off on the 30%, but we can never take care of 100% of the water in 30% of the land. So how do you make the people want to take action? Well, the strategy from day one has been this, positive enforcement, always to point out the benefits of doing the right things, instead of pointing out the negative consequences if you do the things wrong, or if you don't do anything at all. So this is really crucial to us, always point out the good benefits of it. And the one thing we recommend the most for people to do is to disconnect the downpipes uh, and take care of the rainwater in their own gardens instead of letting it go down into the sewer system. And this is so important, so we actually pay people to do it. So for every downpipe that you disconnect from the sewer system, we pay 2,500 crowns, that's approximately 250 euros. And that's a very strong motivator and very good tool to have in our toolbox when we try to uh, when we contact people. Uh, and the bicycle here is one example of how we try to reach out to people in new ways. Uh, so this is a movable ad uh, that goes around in Malmö sometimes, and it also uh, contains an exhibition inside. So we can open it up, and inside you have a full exhibition of how to take care of the rainwater and how to disconnect the downpipe. Uh, and as you can see on the side here, it says Förda regnvattnet, harvest the rainwater. And that's exactly what we want people to do. And this phrase has proven to be very efficient. Um, most people in here, I guess, think that stormwater and sewer system and those solutions are the most interesting thing in the world. That's not the general opinion, I may tell you. <laughs> Most people in Sweden have a very, very low interest of sewer systems and uh, stormwater solutions. So when we talk about it to them, it's no use to talk about unburden the sewer system. That's not very, big, not very catchy. But when we talk about harvest rainwater, it's no longer a stormwater solution. It's a garden solution. And garden interest in Sweden is huge. People pay a lot of money and put a lot of time into their gardens. So when we put the context into a garden context, people start to listen. So that's been very helpful. Um, other things we do is to contact, to reach out, to seek collaboration with large actors like uh, real estate companies, housing societies, architects, landscapers, municipalities, uh, everyone who's working uh, with those issues. And we don't hesitate to actually pinpoint uh, actors and knock on the door and say, okay, we know that you have a history 
of flooding issues, we think we might have a solution. If you're willing to do this, we can do that, and the municipality can take this part. Are you interested? I think the three of us can actually work something out. So that's one way of doing it. We also know that um, especially housing companies, housing societies have a very low know-how. They don't always know what to do. They want to do things because they want to do the right thing, but they don't know how to start. So that's where we can send our expertise. So instead of money, we can send a person, an engineer, to go to them uh, and get them started. So this is whom you should contact, this is what you should do, you should look for this, you should examine that. And that's also a good start. And this has also been proven to be quite popular. So, um, does it work? <laughs> of course it works. <laughs> we wouldn't be here otherwise. Now, we've been working with this project for about two years. Um, we can see some results. Uh, we can see, well, but of course, the changing the way people think about water doesn't, you don't do that change overnight. It will take time. Uh, you have to be pretty persistent. Uh, I want things to happen fast, but it doesn't always do that. Um, but we can see, for example, what Nina told you about the, the disconnecting downpipes. We had that offer for 2,500 crowns for since the 90s. Well, the exact amount of money has changed over the years, but but um, it has been around since the middle of the 90s. Um, and since we started our project from so from the four years before, or the five An years average before, of. average before uh, 2018. Um, so if we, since we started this, um, we can see an increase in the amount of, of uh, disconnected downpipes for, I love statistics, <laughs> 1,752%. That's pretty good, right? So we take it in percent and not in numbers, because it looks better this way. <laughs> um, so we, and of course we see uh, an increase in interest in our questions from, from also from private, uh, from uh, uh, urban developers and other stakeholders. Uh, and of course we see uh, an increase in the reuse of water. Uh, of course, since last summer we had no rain at all. So we can talk about the, the reuse of water and that that's it attracts very many people. Um, and one thing I think we are, we are trying to not only get the statistics <laughs> and the percentage, but also uh, never to be contempt of what we are doing, always trying new stuff. If one thing doesn't work, we have to do it another way and try to test. So uh, one thing we do is that we test different uh, messages. So when we're doing an, a drive in social media, we are testing two different messages. So once one was um, uh, fast money, uh, 2,500 crowns for your downpipes. And one was, it's better to make room for the water in your garden than in your basement. Um, and we can see uh, what attracts people and we can uh, make our information out from that. So uh, always try and test and, and motivate what you're doing. So the, the cost efficiency, uh, this is just a very, very simple um, measurement of costs. Uh, I like to talk about what it costs to take care of one cubic meter of water, because then you can uh, compare it to different ways of taking care of water. So if I pay uh, a person 2,500 crowns for connecting one downpipe, and the downpipe takes about 50 square meters, and it, it's a 10-year storm, it's like 20 millimeters, uh, it will cost 2,500 crowns for that cubic meter of water. Um, and if we Compare that to retrofitting in a park. We have Södertälje Parken, uh, the first cloudburst park in Malmö. Uh, it was a pretty cheap park. We don't have a lot of those park in the central areas that just laying around waiting to be cloudburst parks. Uh, we paid about the same amount. If you're talking about doing like rain gardens in existing streets or doing underground storage, we are take, talking about ten times the money for one cubic meters. And if you're doing really cool urban uh, cloudburst uh, places like Tossinger Platz in Copenhagen, that costs about 70,000 crowns per cubic meters. So 
is not only a smart and efficient way, it's also a cost efficient way. And another way of measuring uh, our efforts is this one. This is NCC, it's a company that was contracted to buy a build, uh, pumping station for us. And they put up those beautiful signs. Mm. And the green one here on the right, uh, they wrote, uh, bring on the 100 year storm. Uh, we're building a new pumping station, yada yada. And then they ended with, tillsammans gör vi plats för vattnet, uh, bring, uh, building flood resilience together, which is the name of our project. So I think that's absolutely brilliant. When you get someone else to use our message and use it as their own. I think that's also a way of measure our success. So I think it's cool that they're using it. So I will do the same, use theirs. Bring on the Hundra Årsregn. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, and we can just say that we have an, uh, a website uh, with a lot of information, uh, especially in Swedish. In Swedish. But mm -hmm. there's a lot of pretty pictures and movies you can see. <laughs> Disconnecting down pipes and... Uh, and an Instagram, And an course. Instagram, mm -hmm. of course. Nina and Nina. Uh, one thing that you didn't do was introduce you, because you have different backgrounds. That is also yes. a, a sort of a new way of thinking, new way of, of working together. Yes. You're both employed at VSC, but yes. you have different backgrounds. <gasps> yes. I'm an engineer. And I'm a com communications officer. Yeah. So Nina, she also said she take my engineer language and she translate it to Swedish. Uh, so <laughs> never let an engineer talk to people because they <laughs> don't know how. That's why we have Nina. You may have to talk, but not write. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you may have to talk, not write. <laughs> yeah. But that's mm -hmm. good. That's also some, some new thinking that we need to introduce. Mm -hmm. We need to communicate. Mm -hmm. So. Questions for Stina and Nina? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, just out of curiosity, a really short question. You said like the message, the basement or the money message. Which one was the best? Uh, it was <laughs> almost the same, but it was kind of interesting because most men uh, went chose for the, the money. went for the money. And most uh, women were kind of worried about the basement. So. Oh. <laughs> that was the, the most uh, significant difference between them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what they say about us. But mm. <laughs> That's the upside of the, uh, well, the trackability of the social media, so you can see everything. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's been clicking on what? Mm. Wolfgang Rauch, I have a question. You mentioned you're not, you cannot really change existing um, connections on the, on, the, on the private land, basically. Um, it's understood that if you have a, an existing pipe connections, you cannot really break it. But what about changes or new developments? Uh, can you simply not enforce um, green-blue infrastructure? No, not on private property land. But that means you have to provide sewer systems yes. even... Okay. Yes, welcome to Sweden. <laughs> oh, okay, this it is sucks. interesting <laughs> because this is definitely something we're yeah. not doing and that's actually where we can uh, really make some changes. Yeah. Yes. Okay, yeah. interesting. We know, but we are working on it on a national yeah. level uh, to try to change it because it's, it's, it's crazy. We cannot continue building the cities like this. Uh, we all know what to do, but we don't have the like, legal demands to do it. Mm. And it's like uh, Franz was pointing out, uh, only 30% of the land is owned by the municipality, but it's obviously raining all over the city. It doesn't only rain on that small orange 30% <laughs> piece. It does rain on the blue part as well, so. Mm. Oh. Because, well, Franz van der Ven again, uh, I'm, I'm puzzled by your final slide. Bring on the 100 years rain. Yeah. Because I think what you're after is not, well, the, the, the way you deal with the 100 years rain will be very, very different from the way you want to deal your citizens with the, the three times per year rain or the, the, yeah. the once per year rain. Isn't that a very, rainwater harvesting, uh, use of rainwater, 
rainwater storage isn't that very different from the way they want to to protect themselves from the once in a hundred well, year rainstorm because it, it relates to say say the the coping capacity and, and the adaptive capacity yeah. uh, that that Steve was talking yeah. about as well. Yeah. Um, but we we, we 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 usually call it like when we made uh, the cloudburst plan we call it I don't know drip by drip, pond by pond or something. So uh, if everyone is taking care of a small amount of the of the the water the the it will be less and and of course we are building the cloudburst parks we are building the the huge structures or we are looking on how to cope uh, with uh, early warning systems uh, to deal with a hundred year storm but we will have to deal with a little bit less water when the hundred year storm comes if at least all the rain barrels also are filled with water so, uh, so that's uh, absolutely that's true. But, but your your primary concern about a hundred year storm is to protect your your vital infrastructure that it's still working after the storm. Huh? Mm. So it's it's minimizing damage of of that yeah. uh, of that event, mm. which which brings us to a completely different uh, theme in communication, I think, mm. as compared to to the way you were, were talking about earlier. Yes, it's it's well as doing communication in 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 both. I think, um, but I think it. But by by taking care of, of a small amount of water, you will you will get a result in the end. Uh, no, 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 yeah, that, that, yeah, pos yeah. that positive result is there. But but the primary concern of the hundred year rainstorm and a hev even a heavier rainstorm is to to minimize the damage. Uh, yes. in basically, uh, you you want mm. to avoid flooding of in, in particular of your critical and vital infrastructure. Mm. Maybe even allow the, the the basement to be flooded in order to avoid flooding of of a subway system or. No, yes. we, we but I think that's, yeah. a, as you said, that's a, uh, a different kind of communication for yeah. a different, uh, uh, part of a different target group and also a different situation. So this is more the, this is about the communication that we direct to the residents of Malmö to, in order for them to take action. Yeah. The other one is more to explain how does it work uh, on a bigger level. And we also, yeah. we talk about two levels of objectives. So one is to change the way people think about water and urban water especially. And the other one, this one, is for people to take individual action. And I think if we reach the first one, that will also spill over to the second one. But I, I think you're right, there are two mm. different um, uh, strategies. Yes, yes, yeah. yes yeah. obviously. <laughs> okay, we have one question here. First, thank you for your uh, interesting presentation. Uh, I have two questions. Uh, the first one is we had a, a interesting statistic, 1,700 something mm. percent uh, increase. Uh, my question is, what is the absolute percentage, the number of disconnected uh, pipes in comparison to the total uh, properties? Uh, the absolute figures, you mean? Oh. Yeah, it, yeah, it's a very few compared to, to all the the... Uh, the houses we have uh, this year we are I mean I think we have like 200 disconnected pipes uh, this year uh, and I think I don't know how many private property owners that we have in uh, small houses 26,000 26,000 so uh, just a very small percent but we are hoping that uh, you, get, you get a snowball effect mm. that uh, where, when do we reach the tipping point I don't know but uh, hopefully we will do that and it will be uh, or maybe it's the when we do, are when we are able to change the laws, then we can also use it more force. And just yeah. It gives that interesting comparison between Sweden and other countries because um, usually, um, as far as I know, in some countries um, they can actually enforce, especially for new uh, urban development, that they need to have this, this yeah. kind of system. And uh, my second question is about. Uh, this rain um, water harvesting tanks. So when people have that, this is a, some sort of decentralized system. But how far are we to put an information layer, as Gustav was talking about, to have decentralized uh, systems but manage them in a centralized uh, way? So for example, when we have this 100 years of precipitation, there's a centralized system that empties all those tanks to get the maximum uh, impact. Uh, yeah. We're not there doing it on, on that small scale, but we are uh, looking at it um, uh, for our own uh, tanks or, or uh, ponds or looking for a weather uh, or pumps. So, uh, and we have installed a new um, radar. radar system that is more exact than the, 
the, the national weather system. Uh, so the, the plan is to be able to weather control our system. Uh, we're not there yet to... to um, but hopefully if we get a really good um, system... Yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we, if we have a very good system, we can go. I mean, we can go on social media and tell people it's. Uh, it will start to rain soon. Empty your barrel. But uh, I guess that's as far as we are thinking right now. Uh, I just wanted to reflect a little bit on France's question because these rain barrels, when you install, I think if it comes to cloud bursts, I suppose that these rain barrels will be already filled up. Yeah before the peak of the cloudburst strikes. Yeah. 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 So, so how would it benefit the cloudburst management? You need to put a, um, a big tube on the top of the barrel so you can let the water out. So when the barrel is full, it will uh, flow over and come out into your garden. And then you, you yeah. into your uh, lawn or uh, some plantings or something. Yeah. So you don't get the money if you don't put a plug on your pipe. Yeah. You can't just put a barrel on and make it overflow back in the pipe system. You have to put a plug on the on the pipe, and then you have to, yeah, like Nina said, let the water pour out in your garden or something. And so. we do check. We do we check. We don't just yes. give out the money. We do no, check. No, we do check. So they're doing it the right way. Mm. <laughs> can can I just add on your question before um, about the the controllable uh, small devices basically so the it's actually a matter of research because we are actually also doing exactly in that area some research and the problem is the main problem is the information you need to have a reliable information and the cheap reliable information that is the main trick you cannot simply uh, put uh, all <coughs> these rain bells on a on a, on a VLAN system or or just give them a, a cellular f phone or something so you need to have really cheap communication layer and that that's the main thing. The rest is engineering. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you.